Amen, amen, and amen. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, um, in Israel, um, all the shops, offices, banks, Friday afternoon, everything is turned off. And uh, either you like it or not, <laughs> if you're secular or religious, you know, it's Shabbat and uh, everything shuts down. And it's really a very nice, um, it's nice to have this quietness after the busy week we have had. And, uh, and in the evening, as the sun goes down, you, we uh, gather together around the table as a family. And uh, before we eat, we do the blessings of Shabbat. And the first thing, what, what do I do as, uh, as the papa, as the father, the priest of the home? I uh, honor my wife and Chaya, she likes the candles. And after she likes the candles, I uh, read the scripture from uh, Proverbs uh, 31, verse 10. A woman of valor, who can find? Her value is far beyond rubies. Well, I found her. Her name is Chaya, my dear wife. Her husband's heart trusts in her and he lacks nothing valuable. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. And we can read the, this whole woman of valor uh, in Proverbs 31. And then we, we, I take my hands and I bless her. I put my hands on, on her, on her head. And I speak blessings and I praise God for and honor her and uh, uh, for being such a wonderful wife and a wonderful mother uh, and a wonderful partner. Uh, earlier we were talking about uh, partnership, men and women being partners, uh, equally partners. And, and, and this is so true as we are partners together, uh, husband and wives. And, um, and this is so important before we do anything, we, we bless uh, and honor uh, our, our wife. So I want to encourage you husbands, do, do, please do your duty every, <laughs> every Friday night and bless your wives. And here's my granddaughter here. She's dressed for purring. She's dressed like uh, Queen Esther, you see? We, we, uh, in Israel, you know, yesterday and today we celebrated Purim, the Feast of Esther. And the, and the children, they dress up. <coughs> so she has been, uh, uh, granddaughter Hadas has been dressed. Yes. Her name is Adas. Her name is Adas, by the way. <laughs> and she is dressed as Queen Esther. Okay. Okay, can I, may I continue with yes. the blessings, yes. please? Okay. Thank you. Say bye-bye. Bye. Wave bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so again, after she lights the candles and I read Proverbs 31 and I honor my wife, then uh, we bless the boys. And then we bless the girls. And I think it's so important that before we do anything, before we eat, that we take the time and we bless, uh, bless uh, our, our children. Uh, with the boys, we say, uh, we pray in Hebrew, we speak blessings. May the Lord bless you as he bless our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Ephraim, and Manasseh. And then we bless the girls. We also take down our hands and we bless the girls. Bless you. As he blessed our foremothers, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. And I believe this is so important that we take this tradition on Friday night and bless our wives and bless our children. And we need to do this more often. Amen. And uh, after that, what we do, we read from uh, Genesis chapter 2. We read from Genesis chapter 2 uh, in uh, verse 1, 2, 1, 2, and 3. It was evening, it was morning, the sixth day. Finish with the heavens and the earth and the whole host of all. And God completed by the seventh day his work which he had made. And he ceased on the seventh day from all its work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because thereon he ceased. And the word in Hebrew ceased is Shabbat. That's where Shabbat comes from, which means God ceased. In other words, he stopped all the work he did and he sat down and he's relaxing. 
from all its work, which God had created by its reproduction. And then we take the cup, we always, every Friday night, we take our cup with wine, with red wine, and we bless it. And uh, I'm gonna ask the children to be quiet so I can do the blessings. <laughs> I have a full house, as you can see. Okay, so um, we do the blessing of the wine first, okay? Ruchata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Bore Pri HaGafen Amen Blessed our God, King of Universe who bring, who bring forth uh, who, sorry who create the fruit of the vine Amen And we, we pass it around, this is something we do and then there is another blessing, we do um, we honor God for creation, for that He's the creator of the creation. We say, Blessed are God, the eternal our God, King of the universe, who sanctified us with His commandments and brought pleasure in us and caused us to inherit His holy Shabbat in love and favor as a memorial of the work of creation. And this is what we remember that He is the creator. The that day ranks folks among the holy convocations and remembers of departure from Egypt. We also remember our exodus from Egypt. For us as thou selected, sanctified us among all the nations, that thou cause us to inherit thy holy Shabbat and love and favor. Blessed art thou, Lord, eternal, who hallowed the Shabbat. And then we go, we bless uh, with the bread. And, uh, and this is how we finish. We, we take the two loaves of bread. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I'll stand up so you can see. There's a beautiful two loaves of bread. We call them uh, challah which is uh, especially a Shabbat bread, sweet Shabbat bread. And we take usually two, we bless it and then give it to the family and we break bread. Now, why two? The tradition is that we remember when Israel was for 40 years in the desert, God provided them every morning fresh man, manna. And it was very delicious and it was fresh every morning. They didn't have to do anything just to go and enjoy this beautiful uh, croissant or challah, whatever you want to call it. And um, every morning it was fresh, but he told them to pick up enough for the same day. That the next day it wasn't good. The next day, God gave them another fresh manna. But on Friday, he gave them a very specific instruction. What was it? That they should collect double, double portion because the Shabbat morning, there was no fresh manna. So what happened? The fresh uh, the manna that they collected on Friday kept also and became, became was fresh also the next day. So even on Shabbat when they rested, they had a double portion from Friday and they could enjoy the double portion when they were having a Shabbat, a rest day. So what is the lesson? Also when you rest and be with the Lord, rest he provides all your needs and gives you double portion. Amen. So let me do the blessings. Amen. Bless our thou God, King of the universe, who bring forth bread from the earth. Amen. And then we take this bread and we break it and we pass it around to everybody. And we enjoy this bread. And then we all proclaim Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat so, we say, <laughs> so we say, may you have a wonderful, peaceful Shabbat. You see, let me conclude with this. As believers and followers of Yeshua, we have Shalom with God. Why? It's because we have repented and ask the Prince of Peace, Yeshua, Jesus, to come into our heart. And by him coming to our heart, he's given us peace in our soul and peace with God and restored our relationship with our loving father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this is what's so beautiful that through him, we have Shalom. And it's important for me to say this as I conclude. In the midst of all the turmoil that we're going through, if it's uh, <laughs> the corona, the COVID-19, or even the war that's going on in Ukraine. What we can do is pray for the peace that is above all understanding 
that will come and rule in people's hearts. And we pray that during this time, that the believers in Ukraine and also in Russia, that through this time, they will reach out to the people who don't know the Lord with the good news. What is the good news? That Yeshua came and gave his life for us. And by repenting, accepting in our heart, he gives us a new heart. He gives us shalom, peace in the midst of the turmoil. And we can walk trusting him, looking up that he is watching over us, that he never leaves us or forsakes us because he's a wonderful God. He's a loving father. In the midst of all the turmoil, we have our hope is in the Messiah, Yeshua Jesus. So this is my encouragement for you as we are entering this Shabbat rest with the Lord. And uh, may you have a Shabbat Shalom with your families, with your homes and your communities, your congregation, wherever you are. May the Lord richly bless you and watch over you and keep his eyes open you and watch over you and bless you all the way from Israel. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, I just, uh, I just love it. I love, uh, I love you instructing us and telling us about Shabbat and the, and the fact that you're there in Israel with your family, actually doing it every week is just, uh, it's so inspiring. It's just so, uh, don't you feel the joy that comes from the Mizrahi household as they're, uh, as they're celebrating Shabbat? I'm telling you, it's just so great. Uh, it's the next best thing to being there. So, Susan, would you do you have a couple of comments you'd like uh, before you introduce our uh, next honored guest here? Well, I, I've learned to, that this is becoming the, my favorite part of the week. <laughs> Even though we're ten hours behind you, we get a we get a head start on it. <laughs> um, anyway, I uh, I have seen something over the past year that has caught my attention and um what i see is that in the midst of the storm even with the war going on right now um and even tense issues that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis uh, when we get on these calls i'm seeing god perform a healing for the nations that god is raising up a company it's his, it's called his bride <laughs> that's coming up above the din of the of what we see day to day on the news and things that we're dealing with and we can come into this place of his rest and in his presence and in a oneness with one another and i'm really seeing a healing for the nations here and where people just ordinary people are coming together and the power and the wonder of god is in our midst and so I just wanted to open this up. You know, the number 22 has been showing up so much from Second Chronicles 20, verse 20 to 22, verse Isaiah 22, 22. Well, here's another 22 verse. Uh, it's called the river of life out of Revelation 22, 1 and 2. And I'll just read it to you. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the land. And in the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And um, I just believe that when we clap our hands, we're like those trees. <laughs> on each side of the river and it's for the healing of the nations and so by that i want to introduce uh Hormoz shariat whom we've just come to know and love over the years just like you and avi and chaya uh, his wife is sick today but Hormoz is here to release the blessing from iran uh, over israel and uh, let's just take this as a holy moment of divine intervention on the the affairs of men that are roaring all around us and know that God is with us. Hormoz, you're going to have to unmute. unmute. There you all go. All right. Yeah, thank you, Sue. <clears throat> thank you. As you see, we are, we are getting ready for a special broadcast today. We have our church services on Fridays because that's a day off in Iran and we provide church service to millions of Iranian 
underground church believers. So pray, pray for me and for us as we go in the next uh, 15 minutes to, to the studio to do that. But I just want to share how blessed I am every time I participate in this. I mean, I came a little bit late, but as I was hearing Avi, I started crying again, touched by God, touched by his heart, and uh, so inspired, Avi. And, and uh, what, what I see uh, you demonstrate, which is biblical, I feel so pain that the church is missing out. The church is missing out to what, uh, what the Jews and what you have from the Bible. I mean, this is a blessing from the Bible. And I want to pray, but before that, I just want to know, uh, let you know how inspired I am, how committed. I mean, every time I see you, Avi, and you do this, I, in my heart, I say, I got to bring this to Iranian church. This must be a part of the church, not just Iranian church. This, this is a blessing from generation to generation. And I'm committed, and I need your help, Avi, to teach the uh, Christian Iranian Muslim background Christians in Iran to, to receive that, to understand that, and to pass on that blessing to their family. So uh, I'm, I'm not just inspired, I'm committed. I'm committed to do that. And another point is I'm not amazed now that I see uh, attendees and I see Avi and uh, I'm not amazed anymore how the Jews spread around the world, even the most hostile environments, they prosper. They rise up both in power and, and finance. Almost every nation, even the most hostile nation against them, they do well. And today, and when I see Avi blessing his family, it gives me a key, one of the keys why. Why, when we do this in our families, we, our children will be more blessed than us. They will be more spiritual than us, more, um, more wiser than us. We are passing it on. So I just have to share how blessed I am to be here. And I want to pray and, uh, uh, and bless uh, uh, bless uh, you know i'm a muslim background believer and uh, and uh, what happening in iran is so amazing and the, the hearts of iranians especially iranian christians have already turned towards israel there's are so many underground uh, muslim background believers in iran so many of them are praying and sometimes fasting for the for israel and they love they love what god is doing there so uh, let me bless, uh, I'm blessed today, and uh, let me bless back, Father. I'm so grateful, Lord, for all the things you brought into this world through, the, through your people. Um, you chose that nation to bring a blessing to, to the world over, over centuries, over generations. And I received that. And Iran and Iranian Muslims are receiving that blessing you gave to that nation to the, the children of Abraham, who you promised that they will bless the world. And we are, we are blessed through them. And we are blessed to um, uh, your child, Avi, and others, Lord, that, uh, so, that uh, know you and help us to get to know you better. Lord, uh, today, as I'm blessed, at first, I pray, God, that what you have shown, uh, what you have taught your people in the Old Testament, those that are from you, those who according to your heart, Lord, in the name of Jesus, bring that blessing that I saw today through Avi. Bring it to our Christian families, Lord. In Jesus' name, let this be a part of, Christian, of our Christian faith, praying for our family, praying with our family. I'm blessing them. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray that you help me to bring that into Iran, to bring that blessing into families in Iran, that they they may receive that. And what you have started in Iran will go generation after generation because you have promised to, to bless Iran. In the name of Jesus, I, I bless Israel. I bless, I bless the Jews. As I have received, Lord, I bless back. I have received salvation. And today I received a blessing from Avi. So in Jesus' name, I bless back 
Lord, I pray you, you sustain that. And according to your will, that nation will be saved. Nation will be saved. And I pray, Lord, what you're doing in Iran, according to Romans 11, 11, you make the Jews jealous for what you're doing among Muslims with your visions, dreams, and miracles and salvations, Lord. I bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Carmelos, it's always good to see you. And may God bless you and prosper your word today. May it multiply as it goes forth into Iran. Let's come on, everybody. Let's believe that there are hearts that are going to change today, that this yeah. is the hour for the divine reversal. Come yeah. on. <laughs> we say Iran is going to reverse <laughs> this yeah. year. Um, I think, Ar Aranya, can you speak a blessing over Hormoz? Because you, the Lord spoke to you about uh, Iran as well. Just pray a blessing over him. She, uh, there we go. Yes. Well, so good to see you again, Hormoz. And uh, for us, you are the face of Iran. And uh, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for our Iranian family today on Shabbat, Father. We thank you because uh, we speak peace right now and shalom over Iran right now, Father. The peace of God will be like a blanket covering this nation, Lord. We ask even as we enter this Purim shifting, there will be these divine turnarounds that you have promised, even as in the book of Esther. You are the God of providence, and we know in your sovereignty, Father, you are going to turn everything around for the good of your people in Iran. So, Father, we bless Iran right now with your peace, your love, Father. And most of all, we ask a revelation of the man from Nazareth for every Iranian, Father God, right now. We ask, Lord, that even as Hormoz and Avi are declaring this Shabbat of peace over the families, we ask, Lord, as you spoke in Ephesians 2.14, we declare this, for he himself is our peace and our bond of unity, who have made both groups, Jews and Gentiles, man and woman, into one body and broke down the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. So we thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And I just... um. I wanted to pipe in here, Hormoz, I don't know if you know about this, but um, Wednesday we released, started a 24 hour thing of an Esther decree. And um, on that, I think it was 15 minutes after we launched that, there was a 6.0 earthquake in Iran. And I want to just declare this over Iran and what Rania just spoke, Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and a deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. So we say, Iran, arise, for the true throne <laughs> shall be established in Iran. And this other stuff is going to be reversed <laughs> in Jesus' name. Yes, amen. Amen. So, so um, this, we're, along with the line of the healing for the nations today, um, Katya, are, could you speak from Russia? Let's... We have both Russia and Ukraine on the line. Mm -hmm. Well, hi, everyone. Um, I wish I could see the, the faces of the people from the Ukraine, but um, I want to uh, say, I want to say that um, I'm very sorry for what's happening in the Ukraine. It's very, very wrong, and I just wish that it had never happened. And I think God wishes so too. And we pray here in Russia for the Ukrainians. We pray with love and we bless Ukraine with our whole heart. 
And this whole thing that's happening with the war was not expected and was a shock to us as well. And I just want to speak a blessing and I really, really repent on behalf of my nation for every person, every man, woman and child that was killed for, for devastating such a beautiful, beautiful land that I love so much uh, with all my heart. I've been to the Ukraine many times. Um, I graduated from school in the Ukraine, but that's not why I love it. I love it because I feel God's love for the Ukraine. And Lord, I just bless the Ukraine. And I say, Ukraine, you have a hope and a future. Only I have, only I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, Ukraine. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to prosper you. You have a future and you have a hope. And I bless the Ukraine with hope, with uh, love that is stronger than hatred, with life that is stronger than death. I bless you, Ukraine, to receive all the help you need right now from God. I ask you, Father God, to bless the Ukraine with uh, hearts that are able to forgive, with hearts that are able to stand in the middle of the war and to, to love their enemies and to bless those who curse and to, uh, to do good to those who harm. And I ask you, Father God, that your name, the name of Jesus will be glorified through that. Lord, I ask you for safety for every person who calls upon your name because your word says so. And I bless this absolutely beautiful, beautiful country, Lord, that has been so, so devastated. I ask you for a restoration, even that this war would stop, stop as soon as possible, Lord. If there are other keys that you want to give us to stop the war, give us those keys. But you have given us this Purim. You've given us keys to stop the war. And Lord, we just use those keys because one of those keys is love, is your love, Jesus, that held you on the cross. So we just bless the Ukraine with a love that uh, destroys hatred, with forgiveness that overcomes offense. We bless the Ukraine with healing, with healing of the hearts. And we ask you to protect every single person, Lord, who lives there. Lord, that the people will lift up their eyes and see your protection, Lord. And out of this, what the enemy has meant for evil, Lord, I ask you to do good, to turn it around for good, for revival for the Ukraine, for revival for Russia, for the forces of darkness who wanted our nations to collide and um, achieved it to some extent, that they would be put to shame this Purim and that love will win over hatred because you on the cross, my Lord Jesus, you killed hostility on the cross. And I stand on that, Lord. And I bless the Ukraine, bless the Ukraine. And I ask you, Father God, that today your angelic hosts will do battle in the heavenly realms, that the battle on earth will stop. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, Father God. Thank you, Lord. And I bless the destiny of the Ukraine, that everything is happening will not hinder the destiny of this nation, but Ukraine will step into its destiny as a nation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Katya. That's such a powerful prayer. Um, and I just want to add, just add to that before we have the, um, the uh, person from the Ukraine pray to just from the United States, just a prayer of repentance over to the extent that our government has done things to escalate the war and not to uh, not to stop it, not to be uh, peacemakers. I just um, we just re repent over that, and we're we are are sorry for any contribution that the United States has made in terms of uh, escalating the violence over there. And uh, 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 so we just ask your forgiveness for both sides, for both Russia and Ukraine, and just and just say, Lord, may your your kingdom come and your will be done in this situation. Um, in Yeshua's name. And uh, Fred, I just have a sense that Katya, um, mm -hmm. that 
there's a sense of healing. I'm feeling such a healing anointing yeah. um, on yeah. this. And we release it over the Russian church mm -hmm. that you're going to be called to be repairers of the breach and restorers of streets to dwell in. That God is going to give you new strategy. A fresh, he's doing a new thing. He's going to give you strategy that will bridge the gap between um, the heavenly realm and what you're experiencing on earth. And also to be a voice of healing for the Russian people and for the Ukrainian people in the future. There will be a powerful uh, reconciliation, I think, coming out of this. And the world will see it because only God could do it. I want to say something, uh, uh, you know, when I, I repent, really, there are no words to express. The words are not enough to express what I feel. And the difficult part is that I truly love the Ukraine. You see, I really love, it's not because I'm a Christian and I'm supposed to love everyone. I really do. And it hurts me. It hurts my heart that the Ukraine is devastated because it is such a beautiful land with such beautiful people. I've often said the Ukrainians are much softer in their hearts than we are, though we're very much alike. I often cannot tell the difference, but it really, really hurts me for the Ukraine. I, I don't know how to say this, but I've been there. I've seen how beautiful it is, and I can't believe what is happening now. I mean, if I would have to just repent because I'm Russian, but I do love the Ukraine at this moment, probably I don't know, more than any other land, because God's heart is for those who are hurting, who are suffering. I just feel God's heart so much. I mean, it's easier when you when you don't love. You know, it's like, um, it's someone you love is being hurt and being hurt by my own people. I just cannot express that in words. It's horrible. But I believe that God will heal. And I just really want him to use me for that because I have something in my heart for that. Yeah. Well we, we hear it loud and clear. Thank you, Katya. You, you spoke it so well. Yes. Um, we, I want to turn it over to Ulrika in uh, Herrenhut, Germany, right from uh, a seat of revival. There are uh, Ukrainian refugees there now. They're, things are coming full circle. It was a refugee center when revival broke out, and now it's, a, it's a, becoming a refugee center again. So Ulrika, can you uh... maybe just come quick to our flat? So it's like two, three minutes. So just jump over the street and come here right now. Is it possible? <laughs> <laughs> maybe you can speak for us. Yeah, Julie's husband Jan. Jan. <laughs> yeah, because she's Jan. yeah because she's with the family with uh, our dear friends from Ukraine. So they just went out and coming to our flat. Okay. okay. Yeah, well, yeah. Why, don't you, why don't you give us a quick update from here and who? Well, yeah, give us a quick update and just uh, pray into this while we're we're waiting for. Ooh. Yes, yeah, so, so we are in the moment taking care for in Jesus' house. There are like now fifteen or nineteen people from Ukraine. In the youth with the mission in the castle, about thirty people, and there is another hotel, Komensky. You know very well. They are in the moment 35 and in families another one. So we are just taking care in the moment for about 100 people. And we had a very, very good meeting two days ago with the, with the how to say, leader of the city, the, um, so the boss of our city. So we were like 40 people with schools and doctors and just looking for how to accommodate, how to help, how to bring them to school. So we're just cooperating together and just trying to have a children ministry and looking uh, how we help, how we translate and it's, yeah, and trying to give them just the normal life if possible. But it's really very hard because all those families are divided. All men are in Ukraine and all women and children are here. So you can just imagine this high tension in their heart, uh, what uh, they have to struggle with. And actually three weeks ago, they even didn't imagine they will be in another country. So it is their first time to be even abroad, being in Germany. And now they have to settle down to look in the front. 
Well, it's really very, very difficult, but they are very nice people and very nice children. And I think Ulrike will just come. And uh, Anya, you saw just last, last call and they just integrate in our church and helping and praying together. So we're just looking forward for this, what, what, what will be in, in future. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so they, they just arrived. <laughs> we're, we're all envisioning what, what's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Sorry, we just we just had to run across the street. <laughs> this is just a continuation of uh, our Shabbat experience adventures with the Nova COVID. So it's all, it's all very good. Yes. Okay, but uh, would you mind Dmitri or Ka Dmitri to to switch into translating Anya? She. Hi. She has to catch her breath, but she doesn't speak English. I can translate. Why don't, why don't you, um, uh, Uli, if you could translate for her, that would be great. Okay. It's, it's a little complicated to do the others. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. Я из Украины. I'm from Ukraine. Слава Богу, я нахожусь в безопасности. And thanks to uh, praise to God, I'm in a secure place. К сожалению, много женщин и детей не могут выехать из Украины и чувствовать себя безопасно, как я. And unfortunately, many uh, women and children can't leave Ukraine to come to a secure place. Я всю жизнь говорю на русском языке. Uh, the whole my whole life I speak in Russian. Я всегда считала Россию как говорится сестрой Украины. And uh, for my whole life I consider Russia as the sister of Ukraine. Для меня лично это дикость, это как брат на брата. And for me this is like. Uh, what? Uh, <laughs> This is like a savage, like a brother. It's against crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yes. В России точно так же страдают люди, как и на Украине, в Украине. And also in Russia, people are suffering just as in Ukraine. Особенно это касается людей, которые мирно жили и не понимали в чем дело, и тут очень много страдают матерей и жен. Мужья, чьи и дети воюют на стороне России, убивая мирных жителей на Украине. And, and it's especially those people who used to live in peace and, and mothers are suffering uh, whose uh, men and, and uh, sons are called to war now. И я сама мать, я знаю, как это больно. Когда твоему ребенку плохо, я не знаю, как это потерять, слава богу. Но я знаю, как это больно. I'm a mom myself. Uh, I have kids, and I know how hard it is to feel uh, as a mom if the, if if a child is not well. I never had to go through losing a child, but but even if if the child is is feeling uh, not well, it's it's such a such a burden. Я прошу Бога благословения для всего народа и русского и украинского. And, and so I pray for God's blessing for both the Russian and the Ukrainian people. Я прошу Бога мудрости для правительства, чтобы закончилась эта война. And I pray for wisdom for the government for this war to end. Чтобы мы могли вернуться к привычной жизни. That we can uh, get back to life as normal. Чтобы мы могли пережить боль утраты. That uh, we can even uh, live through the pain of loss. 
Я знаю, что Бог любит одинаково и Россию, и Украину, и солнце светит одинаково и для России, и для Украины. And I know God loves both uh, the Russian and the Ukrainian people, and the sun is shining both for the Russians and the Ukrainians. Я знаю, что мы своими силами людскими не можем остановить войну. And I know with our uh, human means we have no way to end the war. Я знаю, что только Бог и наши молитвы к Богу могут остановить войну. And I know only God and our prayers to God can end this war. Благослови Боже русский народ, благослови Боже правительство русское, чтобы Бог дал мудрость этим людям закончить войну. Lord, I bless the, the I bless Russia, the Russian people and the Russian government that the Lord would grant wisdom to them how to stop this war. Amen. Amen. Well, I think I need to um, follow through with that and just pray into this. Um, there's an authority between Katya and uh, um, I'm not sure your friend's name. They're from the Ukraine. It's Anya. 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 What a beautiful name. Katya and Anya, those, those prayers were from the heart of God. Amen. Yeah, I think, um, could you pray, each one of you, a prayer that God would intervene and end this war? Yes, I will agree with you. To bring I want to pray in Russian. Can I pray in Russian? Yes. Go ahead. Спасибо тебе. Спасибо тебе за и за очень многих людей на Украине, которые вот так находят в своем сердце силы прощать и э, благословлять нас, Господь. И мы одно, Господь, мы одно. В том смысле, что, Господь, у нас нет ничего друг против друга. Ты знаешь сердце народа России и сердце народа Украины. Мы не хотели воевать, и мы не хотим. И мы просим, останови эту войну, Господь. Мы просим тебя в молитве согласия, потому что, Господь, действительно... Только ты можешь остановить войну. Да, Господь. И я молю тебя, чтобы сейчас очень многие соединили свои сердца. Украинские верующие и русские, российские. Чтобы мы взывали к тебе в молитве согласия сердец. И мы сейчас это делаем. И пусть очень многие тысячи это делают, русских и украинцев, Господь. И ты слышишь наши молитвы. И, Господь, я прошу тебя, останови эту войну по милости твоей. Мы просим это. Это наша молитва согласия. Это наш слов о милости, Господь. И, Господь, начни исцелять сердце Украины и украинцев уже сейчас, прошу тебя. Аня, Господь, Господь, мы знаем, что эта война не с плотью, а с Духом Божиим. Пусть в это, в это нелегкое время, Господь, Пусть люди обратятся к Тебе, пусть они поднимут взор на Тебя, Господь, и просят у Тебя прощения за те деяния, которые они делали, просят милости, Господь, просят Твоей защиты, Господь. Пусть это время будет для них роковым, как такое, что вот они должны понимать все люди, и российские, и украинские, что Ты Бог над всем, и Ты можешь остановить все, Господь. Мы любим Тебя, Боже, Ты защищаешь детей своих. Я сама на себе это ощутила, какой Ты защитник, Боже. Ты прибежище наше, Ты наша скала, Господь. Мы знаем, что только в Тебе покой и в Тебе защита, Боже. Ты населил всю землю своими детьми, которые в разных странах сейчас готовы помогать украинским женщинам и детям, которые вырываются из пекла, Господь. Господь, спасибо тебе за этих людей, которые готовы 
у себя в домах, принимать нас как беженцев, Господь, и заботиться о нас. Спасибо тебе, Боже, благослови этих людей. Господь, еще раз тебя прошу за правительство российское, дай мудрости, Господь, президенту России, Господь, и всем людям, которые у него там советники, чтобы они, Господь, имели мудрости и остановили это кровопролитие, Господь, и эти убийства. Пусть это все прекратится, Боже. Спасибо тебе, Господь, за все. Аминь. Вау. Карен, ты там? Можешь нас просто в какой-то вопросе? Ты еще там? Карен на звонке, но я не уверен, что она available. Окей. О, я был прав. I just need a moment though to re reconnect my sound. So just give me a second. Yeah, that's fine. And then Sue, we're at the end of the hour. So yeah. we, need uh -huh. to, we need to close. Well, but... let, oh, let's say a prayer or two in, in between. Yeah, I just wanna, I, I, I wanna pray over the, um, the Ukrainians there in Hernhut and, uh, um, and over the Novakovas, because I know that they're, they're, I'm sure they're leading to help the congregations. Um, uh you know take care of the of these people it's just so amazing because here this is this is the original calling of heronhood was to bring together refugees and uh and here there are now upwards of a hundred refugees right in heronhood and probably more to come in and so we just say father you're the one who knows their needs you're the one who knows how to how to take care of them you're the ones who can mobilize the people of Heronhut. I just pray that even unbelievers in Heronhut would, uh, that their hearts would, um, would uh, be softened towards the refugees coming in and that there would be, um, there would be more than enough provision, uh, both housing and food and, um, and just love and care for the children, for the mothers, and that, um, that Lord, that you would, uh, divinely protect the fathers, the men who are still in Ukraine. Lord, would you make them invisible to the enemy? Would you hide them? Hide them in the shelter of your wings, Lord, that no harm would come to them, no destruction near their tent. And we just say, let the shalom on sh the Shabbat, let the shalom of God penetrate everyone's hearts and, and cause them to be at peace make them feel welcome into the family of god we just declare those things in yeshua's name amen hallelujah hallelujah can yeshua hallelujah i'm so so moved um by hearing what you're all doing in, in heron hut because we we prepared our house the beit yudidia house of god's friends in haifa um we have rooms prepared ready to receive that it's only through Yeshua that they will find healing for the trauma and, uh, and restoration. So, Lord, we just want to lift up your name tonight, oh God, over, over the Ukraine, oh God, Lord, over Russia, Lord, but especially over all the refugees, oh God, who have been so displaced and lives um, completely shattered. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray that they would know your name.
close of this Shabbat, um, may it be an opening for a fresh encounter with Jesus, that we move into this season with yieldedness to him, that he goes deep in our spirit and reveal anything that would hinder us from a fresh encounter with him, and may new strength arise in all of us. Yes, thank you, Lord, for uh, just an incredible time. And um, again, um, uh, Avi and Hormuz, we just uh, so appreciate your leading us uh, in Shabbat. This has really been an amazing time in the, in the hour and a half before that. And our hearts are so very, very full. And uh, this is not the end. It's just the beginning. And uh, so we just thank you, Lord, that you're going to take us into a new, a new place and uh, that our hearts are going to be turned every day towards you in a special way. Um, Hala from Egypt, would uh, you like to? Uh, Avi uh, wanted to bless her? with the ironic blessing, Fred. Oh, okay, okay, fine. Yes, okay, go ahead, Avi. Um, if you have announcements or anything or things to say, I want to give you first. And I just wanted to conclude with the ironic blessing, that's all. Yeah, 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 okay. All right, ahead, Hala, you can join in and you, you speak in, uh, you know, in your language, yes. Go ahead, Avi. Avi, come around you. Okay. Yevachecha Adonai v'yishmerecha. Yae Adonai pana v'lecha v'yichuneka. Isa Adonai pana v'lecha v'yasim lecha shalom. May the peace of God through Yeshua, our Messiah, Savior, and Lord, be upon you and your families and your homes and your communities. We bless you in Yeshua's name. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. Everybody unmute yourselves. Wave to each other. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for this. Thank you. 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 Thank you